Welcome back, and in this episode, we dive into mindfulness. You hear about it, but what is it, and what practices can you incorporate and integrate into every day to allow your food to taste better, your relationships to improve, and most importantly, for your stress to melt away? Let's dive in with Dr. Diana Liu on mindfulness. Welcome back to On the Cusp. I'm your host, Dr. Brett Gilbert, here with another amazing guest, one so close to my heart. Um, I met Diana Liu uh, during COVID, quite honestly, virtually. Uh, we had an opportunity to connect through our Revive Tribe group, and so, so quickly, she became a family member to me and has been one of my closest confidants, has been such an incredible support system for me in so many ways. She has so much expertise, so much to share. She has so much energy and love, and she's all about service. Um, I want to introduce her. She really, when I, when I see her and experience her, first and foremost, we have to introduce her as a mom first. Uh, little Noah is just about a year old, so this is all pretty new. But I have to say that the way Diana approached motherhood, even before Noah arrived, was really, to me, quite revolutionary. And that's something, maybe a topic for another day, maybe it falls in today, but uh, she's really taken such a beautiful approach to motherhood. Um, she's a sleep coach. I always call her a sleep whisperer. Uh, she really has an incredible and innate ability to help people with their sleep. Something we know, as we were just talking about off, off set here, just so foundational to all of our lives. From little Noah, you know, just approaching a year, to all of us in every facet of our lives. Um, she's a facilitator, hosts retreats. Um, she just has such a welcoming, beautiful presence about her to welcome people in, to nurture them, to provide them with the love and the medicine that is within themselves, but she really helps to bring that out of people. She is a dentist. She's practicing dentist. She does an amazing job. She does incorporate a lot of her sleep treatments into dentistry, and she's done a lot of training on that. And she's also an entrepreneur. You know, I've seen her in many different areas, um, you know, really hustling, you know, making it happen, you know, helping to provide offerings so that her services can reach more people. And so with so much love in my heart and so much gratitude, I want to welcome Dr. Diana Liu to On the Cusp. Aww. <laughs> Thank you so much, Brett. That was wow. <laughs> Such a... Oh, it's such a, I'm so grateful for you in my life. Thank you for such a beautiful introduction. And I'm so in awe of all the service, all the love that you pour into your community, into the people here listening, like so much wisdom from you. And I'm just so honored to be a part of your life, a part of this podcast, and just a part of everything you like you're, you're such a special human and and a family member i've learned so much from brett and i'm so excited to dive into today's topic um which is like near and dear to my heart mindfulness and how it um can really be that bridge in dentistry to feeling more fulfilled in our practice in our work and our in our personal life and um, I'm excited to dive in with you today. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, what a great topic, right? Mindfulness, it's, it's a bit of a buzzword in today's world, but it as a practice is an absolutely scientifically proven way to reduce stress, increase productivity, increase the good vibes in your life. But before we jump into mindfulness, and, and really this is part of mindfulness, right, is gratitude practice. But I always ask my guests, I feel like it's just such a great way to get grounded in the moment that we're in. Diana, can you tell us what you're feeling grateful for today? Thank you. Yeah, gratitude is such a, it's such a simple tool that we can just start to not focus on what's lacking, but what we have in our life. And this cultivates more joy. And I'm, I'm just, I'm grateful to be healthy. I'm grateful to have limbs that work, that I can take deep breaths. I can, you know, my digestive system is working. I have a beautiful family. I have a, a one-year-old baby, Noah, which is, it just blows my mind that, you know, he's in my life. And he, a year ago, we didn't have like a human in our life. It's such a miracle to witness and experience um, growing a human and birthing 
and also just grateful to 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 be to be sharing with this with your community to be here on this podcast and for our friendship. So I'm yeah feeling a ton of gratitude. <laughs> Me too, you know, and one of the things you said about breath, you know, this morning I was really trying to get grounded. It's been a busy week and I've been moving and shaking and probably not resting as much as I needed to. And this morning I had a chance to really just let it go. And in the most basic moment, I like literally just was feeling gratitude just for the ability to take a deep breath and recognizing that that deep breath is the difference between being alive and continuing to be a part of this physical world and not. Mm-hmm. And so, yes, like, thank you for saying it on the most basic level of life, which is the breath. We can live without water for a period of time. We can live without food for a period of time. We can't even live for a few minutes without air, without breath. So something so grateful for. So Diana, I want to jump in. I, I think that you're such a perfect person to bring mindfulness to this discussion, to this forum of conversations that On the Cusp has become. This project was a passion project of mine, not to share the clinical X's and O's of dentistry. We can get that so many places, and I'm offering that in different areas. But this is more about life. This is about being a clinician, uh, recognizing that it's hard. It's not an easy life. It's less glamorous in so many ways than what I think idealistically we thought it was. However, that doesn't mean that it can't be incredibly fulfilling and beautiful, but I think incorporating new tools that we did not learn in dental school are so important. And that's why I know very shortly you're going to be giving this incredible presentation to a large group of dentists on mindfulness. And what a perfect time to get you while all of that is fresh and exciting. Diana, let's jump in and just talk a little bit about what would you say is mindfulness? Yeah. Um, so I think, you know, a lot of people may know mindfulness as being present in the moment. I feel like, you know, this buzzword, it's to be dropped into the present moment. However, um, one of the, some other pieces of mindfulness that I really wanted to touch upon today was it's not only just being present in the, in the environment. And I say, Noah, my baby is my greatest teacher because he's just so connected to what's in the here and now but also to be present of what's happening internally inside your body. So this includes your, our mindset, like what are our thoughts, like the awareness of what are we feeling in our bodies? What's our emotional state? What's our internal weather? Um, the, the senses that we're experiencing, like, what are we smelling? What are we hearing? And the different senses in our body, like maybe we're feeling really hot. Like how is our heart rate? How is our breath? Like this internal check-in and bring that awareness. But the key thing about mindfulness is bringing a non-judgmental attitude to ourselves. So bringing that compassion and non-judgment towards the thoughts that we're having, the, the emotional states that we're experiencing. Wow. That's so beautiful. I mean, I love that where it's like even the smells, right? The sounds, like just being so much more attuned to your body in space and the space around you, because unfortunately we're oftentimes so deeply entrenched up here. Right. And so I know that that's a lot of what you're going to discuss in terms of how we can go from here to more being embodied. And um, so I'm really anxious to get into there. Um, I want to talk a little bit about your journey, because I know that your journey, you know, the mindfulness practices and just wellness practices in general have been so supportive for your journey. Uh, Would you mind telling us a little bit about your story? You know, we hear the words burnout, stress. Maybe if you don't want to admit to any of those, we can all at least admit to frustration, right? Within our careers and lives for what it takes to be a dentist and to be a successful one. And by success, I mean, your patients are happy, your practice where you work is happy, but you, you too are happy, right? Because we're often the last one on the list of, of importance. So Diana, tell us a little bit about your journey and how everything you're going to share has really contributed to your growing to, to be the person that you are an amazing person at that. No, thank you. 
Um, yeah. So it was actually, you know, I love how you touched on burnout because it was truly burnout that brought me into the the world of learning and studying um, and 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 you know, learning these different tools and practices to become more mindful. And so um, it all started in first year dental school. So I just want to take you back to that moment. So prior to dental school, I actually did, I graduated uh, in biochemistry. So I was in the sciences. Then I was trying to get into med medical school. I didn't know what I wanted to do. So I was applying to, you know, different, different pathways. Anyways, it actually led me to do a master's of business after, because I had a good friend that was like, Oh, I, like you didn't get into medical school this year. Like try, try business. I really like this program. I'm like, okay, it's different. Let's do it. So I did a master's of business. And after that, um, worked in corporate finance for a couple years. So completely different world. And I realized I was like, Oh, it's not for me. I'm not like a desk job person. I, yeah, I didn't, I didn't really like the world. I learned a lot, but then I, uh, was shadowing, you know, different, types of careers, like pharmacy. I knew I wanted to go into health and science again. Um, and, and, then, and then dentistry. And I was shadowing my dentist who was saying, you know, you'll get like a really good work-life balance in dentistry. That's what he told me. So I was like, okay, sounds good. <laughs> and, and so I'm like super excited. You know, I, 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 did, I did the DATS. I got a good score, got accepted. And... Uh, I was in shock of the course load, like 13 courses in one semester, you know, in undergrad, it's like five courses a semester. You're doing double that 13 courses in one semester, plus labs, plus clinic time with patients. And then I was out of school for two years in business world. So it was very overwhelming. It was like, whoa, like just such a shock to my nervous system. And it, and, it, and so I call this the voice of the inner monster, which we'll talk about more, but that voice was really loud. So this was the voice of self-doubt, of comparison, of perfectionism, of like never knowing if I'm studying en enough for the exam or if that assignment was good enough. And then all these high achievers were all around me. And so the comparison and, you know, so there's just, there was so much brewing internally that that led to my body being in a fight and flight sympathetic response chronically, which then led to um, aches and pains that was starting to feel in my body because I was using, you know, holding a, a handpiece for the first time, like contorting my body in ways that I've never done before. And so I was getting like these aches and pains and then eventually led to burnout where I was starting to like question, was this even for me? Like, should I just drop out? Like, you know, I've had these like really like self-doubt, thoughts of self-doubt, which then led to um, like taking this, these thoughts into my bed with me, brewing about this at night, it was affecting my sleep, then led to insomnia. And then midway through dental school, which this was like the biggest shock, was I woke up one morning and I actually I was numb in my fingers. I lost feeling in my hand. And my muscles and my fingers were so weak, I couldn't even open a door. And I was like, what is going on? And so I thought like, oh my gosh, I have rheumatoid arthritis. I'm like in my knees and I have arthritis. Like, and so I, I went to go see a rheumatologist and she did a bunch of tests and she couldn't find anything. She's like, you don't have rheumatoid arthritis. And so she was asking me about my stress levels. And I'm obviously saying, yeah, I'm like super stressed, burnt out. <laughs> and she's like, well, you know, like that's what stress is. It inflames the entire body. Like you're in an inflammatory response and that can lead to all sorts of like crazy symptoms. And she sees it a lot within her scope of practice. And so um, but luckily, during that time, my mom, who was um, four, around 40 years old at that time, she did a yoga teacher's training and got certified as a yoga teacher. And she was like, I think, you know, this can really help you. Like, just give it a, sh a shot. I've never really done a yoga class before. 
Um, and at first I was like resistant. I was like, I don't know, like, but you know, mom's obviously no best. Why, why are we all so resistant to yoga? I re my wife told me to do yoga for like seven years. And I kept saying no. And then the first time I did it, I never stopped. Right. Right. Cause we, I feel like it's cause I've had this association like that. It was for people that should already be flexible and they were like acrobats and you know, there was this like distance towards that because it was like, oh, that's not me. And I, I don't know about these postures, you know, and that was my initial like perspective of it. And then, um, and then I was like, okay, well, at that point I was like willing to try anything because I was so burnt out. I, I was like, and I was like almost dropping out of dental school. So, um, so I, there was a studio right next to where I lived and they were doing, they're offering this 30 day yoga challenge. And it was $30 for 30 days. And I was like, ah, like, okay, like I'm in, let's, let's try this. And so I signed up. And so the first few yoga classes, I would say it was uncomfortable because I just remember doing these postures that I didn't really know how to do correctly. And, you know, snot stripping out of my nose. I was like, what am I doing? And it was, it was uncomfortable. But then the more I was, I was just like, okay, let's just keep going and see. And so the more I started going, I started to like, like get some of the poses more. And then eventually I was starting to feel just less stressed in my being. Like I could feel the tension releasing out of my body. I felt so good at the end of the class. You know, I was able to, like, my mind was able to just slow down when I was I was done the practice and I was getting a good workout also at the time with, cause I was, I was into like vinyasa and power yoga at the time. And so I kept going and I started to notice my sleep improve the symptoms in my hands. They were coming on less frequently. Just overall, I was seeing like a lot of benefits. And I think it was because I, I did it every day. So, you know, if you commit to something every day, you just start seeing the benefits a lot quicker, right? With anything, like even with dentistry, the more you practice, the better you get. And so, um, yeah. And so I just was at the end of the 30 days, I was like, oh my gosh, like this is, my mom was right. Like, this is amazing. And I mean, I witnessed my mom transform too. Like she, you know, at the age of 40, um, became just healthy in her body. Like she's actually, you know, she's still teaching yoga. She's still very dedicated to, to practicing all the time and she's getting younger. So I was like, whoa, it's like the, like slowing the aging process down. And, and the, and also I didn't realize the mental health component to yoga. Like there's so much, um, when you're, when you're out of, when you're in your body, you actually get out of your head. Like, the more you're dropped into your breath. So I'll go through the three tools to help us become more present, but I'll just say, speak like the overarching, which is the three is dropping into your breath, connecting to your breath, the first. The second is connecting to your body. Like what are you feeling in your body? And the, the third is dropping into your senses. So what are you hearing? What are you tasting? What are you smelling? Because we are, you know, we have these sensory organs that allow us to really take in our environment fully. And so these, you know, three tools that I've developed over time so that it's become more natural. So now it's like, the, I find the more you practice, the more it becomes a part of who you are. So when I'm in a stressful situation, my, I just my, I just naturally take deep breaths. But in the beginning, when you're just starting, there is, you, it's harder because you're bringing consciousness to it and you have to keep reminding yourself. But just like dentistry, you know, now at eight years in dentistry, I've been, I remember those first two years was like the biggest struggle because you're just learning and it's a big learning curve when you're graduating from dental school and you're putting all the, all the tools into practice on real life people. <laughs> and so, you know, and we, we, and as humans, sometimes we make mistakes, right? Sometimes we, we get those x-rays back and we're like, oh, like that root canal failed or that filling uh, wasn't my best. Like, oh no, like there's cavity under that filling I did. And 
And this is the part of that maybe, you know, the reason why I want to speak this out is we're afraid to admit it and it eats us up inside and we feel like we're like the worst dentist and we feel so bad that we did this and we beat ourselves up. And I call this, this, the internal monster, the inner critic, that voice inside our heads that say, wow, like we're so horrible. We're so bad. And so then, you know, we can take that with us to our beds and this can brew and eat us up. And, and then there's shame around it. And, and so, you know, I want to speak this out because every dentist I've talked to has had those experiences where our work has come back and we're not, you know, it's not our best work, but the key is, is that forgive ourselves, practice that self-compassion, you know, practice your inner cheerleader, which I'll talk more of today. This, this, this voice that's the opposite of the inner critic or the inner monster where we're like, okay, like, you know, embrace our humanity. We're human. And as long as we take action to take more courses, get mentorship, get better at our skills so we can bring that clinical excellence and keep growing. So always progress over perfection. And as dentists we get so caught up in the perfection of things. Amen to that. <laughs> that couldn't, you said that so beautifully. And it's, you know, it's amazing because as I'm listening to you, I resonate like a thousand percent. I've lived and still live through that, just like most other clinicians that would hear your voice. So thank you. And please, Keep going because this is exactly <laughs> where we are here. And it's so beautiful how you've kind of broken it down consciously, especially to the three areas of which we can really make make progress in focus. Yeah, definitely. And and so this is why, like when I was starting to see all this progress within myself, then I took a deep dive into the world of mindfulness. So then I got certified as a yoga teacher. Um, I, I, you know, I, I went on a bunch of personal development retreats and trainings. And, and so I, I did want to, and then after that, um, I, I just, you know, when you start to feel like so much benefit for yourself, you just want to share it with others. Like there's no point in keeping these tools to yourself, right? Like you just want to pour out for and share them with others so that other people may benefit. So then I was starting to, you know, um, yeah, like teach yoga to the community, teach yoga to dentists and, and start to, um, I, then I got certified as a wellness coach, as a sleep coach, and starting to share these tools to clients and seeing all these practices work for other people as well. And the big shifts that were happening in their life of feeling, you know, more fulfilled, more joy, more energy, more internal peace. And the most important is to be able to regulate our nervous system, to have the tools to be able to become more emotionally regulated. So this is like what I'm really excited to share, um, you know, if at some point we could just even share some of the practices as well, we can go through some of these like uh, practices that you can feel in your body um, that can, you know, they're simple and that's, and I want to like keep it simple too, because I think as dentists, we're so busy, we have so much on our plate that just by simplifying it and making it like super accessible, um, that it's easy to integrate. It's easy to implement. Yeah. And I mean, the floor is yours because I mean, this is the information that I'm really excited to learn more about and to share with the audience and the listeners. So, you know, talk to us about some of these practices and, you know, how you break it down. Like, how do you teach this in a way where obviously you've shared now you, you, your experience uh, having burnout quite early in the dental dentistry process in school. And I think we all probably had it we just, I didn't know what to call it. You know, I, mm -hmm. I, didn't, I, I lived through so much burnout before I knew it was burnout. But once you know, that gives you a great opportunity to look at like, well, how do I prevent continuing to be in this cycle? And it sounds like the, the yoga challenge and your mom's influence and seeing the benefits really took you on a journey toward learning more. So um, how can we, how can you spread that knowledge here? What, what are the practices that you've simplified down to a form that could be easily adopted by all dentists or clinicians. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So the first tool, um, I already spoke of a little bit about it, but I feel like I just want to touch on this because I think this is like one of the most important too, is the first is awareness of 
the inner dialogue happening. So, you know, I, I spoke about this inner monster. And so this inner voice, and you and I, I think we've talked about it before, you call it the inner counsel, but essentially this voice of perfectionism, of the inner critic, of the self-doubt, of the like, what ifs, like, you know, the worrying about something in the future, the getting stuck in the past. So this internal voice the first step is to a become aware of what is your internal voice so that we can so i like to think of it as like we're a scientist studying our mind and so can we bring an objective observation towards our mind and question the validity of our thoughts so a lot of times we may think our thoughts are so true and so real so for example, one of the things that I noticed a pattern that I had was I would worry about something happening in the future and catastrophic, like a catastrophic event that was like a 1% chance of happening. But in, in my being, I was like, oh my God, this is going to happen. This is so real. And then when I took, took a step back and questioned the validity of that, I'm like, actually it's like 90% chance it's never going to happen, you know, but we can get so caught up in that 10% chance. And so it's like, what do we focus on? And, and questioning if that's, that thought is true, if it's real, and then bringing compassion towards ourselves. So if you find yourself talking negatively, for example, it could be like, oh, like, I'm so stupid. I can't believe I did that. Or you know, sometimes we did like a really bad root canal and we're like, oh, I'm going to get sued. Like we go to like the worst possible situation, or maybe you had a patient complain to the college. Like this is like, you know, some of our worst fears, but it, it's actually so prevalent that it happens. And you see thousands of patients in your lifetime, like someone's probably going to complain about something, you know? And, and so we take it to heart and we think, like we're going to go on like the, the, the wall of shame and everyone's going to find out and we're going to lose our license, like worst possible situations. And so can we take a step back and be like, okay, like what is the reality of the situation? And if you're finding yourself using negative voices to yourselves, think, how can I talk to myself as if I am a baby or a pet or your best friend. Like you would never say to your best friend, oh my God, you're so stupid. Like, I can't believe you did that. Or how could you, like, you should be so good at this now. Like, how come you're not perfect at this, you know, this voice? And so, yeah, speaking to yourself kindly, like you are your own best friend and being your own inner cheerleader, you know, encouraging yourself, focusing on the progress, not the perfection. And then recognizing the patterns you're having. So if we can start to identify like the patterns, like, oh, I, you know, think about the worst case scenarios all the time. That's just a pattern. You know, it's not personal, it's a pattern. And so we can identify these patterns then we can start to shift to healthier patterns, to a healthier internal narrative. And so that's like one of the key components of mindfulness, this non-judgmental attitude towards yourself and towards others. And, the, and then the three components of being able to drop into our body. So I'll start with the breath because, you know, we touched on the breath. I mean, it's like something we almost take for granted because we are breathing all the time. Obviously we need to breathe to stay alive. It's something we unconsciously do, but when we bring consciousness towards our breath, this is what makes it mindful. So we can decide to take a deep breath and breathe into our bellies. So we'll take a few deep breaths just together and let's like create a mindfulness experience. So if you're sitting on a chair or, you know, wherever you are, just you're standing, it doesn't matter. You don't have to be sitting, but just notice the feet touching the ground. Just notice the connection, the contact 
your feet is making with the floor. And maybe putting your right hand on your belly and your left hand on your heart or your chest. So just taking your hands and, and placing it onto your body and where you're breathing, you could just start to feel the breath. So as you inhale, feeling the belly, ribcage, chest expand. And on the exhale, feeling the chest, rib cage, belly drop. Inhale deeply, feeling the belly, rib cage, chest expand. Exhale, feeling the chest, rib cage, belly fall. So we're gonna start to create more balance in our breath. So as you inhale, Feeling everything expand for a count of four. And as you exhale, feeling everything drop for a count of four. Inhale for four. Exhale for four. Last breath, inhale for four. Exhale for four. So as you're connected to yourself, just notice maybe at this point, you feel like your heart rate is slowing down like your breath is naturally getting deeper. And you're starting to just feel more connected to yourself. And so this is a simple breath tool. It's called balanced breathing. Literally just balancing your inhales and your exhales. And, you know, our breath is a reflection of our, our state of emotion. So the more balance we bring to our breath, the more balance you're going to bring to your life. And it's the opposite. If you're feeling really stressed out, your breath will be short and shallow and quick. You slow down your breath, you balance the inhales, you balance the exhales, just that simple tool alone you know, so easy to implement in dentistry. You can do this while you're working on your patients. You can do this all throughout your day as many times. And so, you know, this is a tool I actually use when I'm, um, I'm injecting local anesthetic when I'm doing freezing, because that's a common anxiety people have is they're, they're scared of the needle. And so what I do is I have the patient take two balanced breaths. And then on the inhale, I inject. And then on the exhale, I release the, 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 uh, the anesthetic and slowly, really slow, right? The slower, the better. And they barely feel it. And then I have them take another two balanced breaths after. And, you know, just that simple tool, we can also teach our patients. We can, we can spread this to our staff as well, like for the morning huddles, just a couple balanced breaths to start your day is transformative. And so when we, again, when we bring consciousness to our breath, when we're taking these deeper breaths, like we can change the state of our emotions and be able to regulate our nervous system better. How do you feel? <laughs> I feel so good. <laughs> you know, you could tell, I mean, it, and this is something that I, you know, even when I'm teaching endo or whatever I'm coaching, I always talk about breath because it's free. It's available every minute of the day. It doesn't cause any type of detrimental effects. It has so many positive effects. But to your point where you're saying you can do this throughout the day, you just said local anesthetic, which is also a cue for me. Anytime I'm giving local anesthetic, I remember this is my cue to breathe. When I'm washing my hands, how many times do we wash our hands a day? Breathe. That's my cue to breathe. And then my newest one is anytime your hand touches a curing light, a curing process is a very passive process. Either you're doing it or you're waiting as your assistant does it. Another beautiful moment for yourself as an individual to cue yourself for at least one deep balanced breath, like, like Diana was saying. And 
the nice thing, like, I loved how you said it's like almost like a mirror reflection of your emotions. And so when you're feeling stressed, that deeper breath with the longer exhale, the slowing it down is really helpful. And in contrast, when you're feeling sort of just lackadaisical and maybe it's getting into the afternoon and you still have a few more patients is to speed the breath up and go harder, right? And deeper and faster to, to sort of bring you back around with energy. So breath is to me the, the number one medicine that we all have and way too underutilized. I had Christian on, you know, Christian P Pavel, who we both love so much. And we were talking about the fact that when you're talking about breath, we are breathing all day long. It's whether you want to take advantage of it in a positive way or just do it passively where you're not noticing. But the mindfulness comes in when you are noticing and you are using it to your advantage and you're embodying it. And so I love that, that that's the, the, first, the first of your, uh, you know, the, the important uh, points about mindfulness is, is being aware of the breath. And so then after the breath, I know, what, what comes next? What's the next thing that we can key or focus on? Yeah. Well, first off, I just wanted to acknowledge, yeah, these, I love how you're saying these micro moments in our life whenever we're waiting. I did want to introduce one more breathing technique. I feel like this is like super effective before we get into the body, uh, but you already touched on it a bit and, and Brett and I did a couple of these before we started. So um, but I feel like this is just like one of the most powerful tools that I'm about to share with you now, um, this other breath technique, which is um, extending the exhale twice as long as the inhale. So we'll do, we'll experience a few together. So again, um, actually let's bring our shoulders in because, you know, I feel like we carry a lot of tension in our neck and shoulders as dentists. So let's just roll our shoulders forwards and roll our shoulders backwards. And on your inhale, you're gonna squeeze the shoulders to the ears, breathing through your nose for a count of three. And now exhale out the mouth, <sighs> feeling the shoulders drop for a count of six. And now inhale for three, squeeze, Breathe into your belly and exhale out the mouth. <sighs> Just feeling that tension drop away from the shoulders. And again, deep breath in, squeeze. Exhale, release out the mouth. <sighs> inhale again, squeeze. Exhale out the mouth, release. <sighs> Ah. <laughs> Feels good. Yeah. I feel, I, feel, I feel it in my hands. Mm. I feel it in my feet. I feel my whole body more relaxed after that. Mm. Yeah. So simple. Like just drawing out the exhales. And even, you know, I call this also like a physiological sigh because our bodies are actually naturally sighing um, intuitively. For example, if let's say you were you know, you had a fear of something happening and then it didn't happen. And you're like, oh, thank goodness that didn't happen. Like you just, you sigh, right? And so we are already doing this, but bringing even more awareness, more attention, more focus and cultivating this practice of inhaling for three, exhaling for six, sighing it out. <sighs> so this is a great tool for when you're feeling in a heightened state. So when you're feeling um, very stressed out in overwhelm, like, you know, sometimes that can feel like really hot in your body, you're sweating, your heart's racing, you know, sometimes when we're in a complex procedure, maybe we're feeling that when we're, you know, doing a complex dental procedure. Um, and this is a tool that you could do right in the chair but also, you know, if a patient is feeling really stressed out and anxious, like how many of you had ever had a patient cry in your chair before? I feel like a lot of us have because, oh, like, there's so much dental trauma they could have experienced in the past. A lot of patients have had, unfortunately, very traumatic experiences in the dental chair. I think dentistry back 10 years ago was very different to how it is now. There's a lot more empathy and compassion and 
Um, but you know, they have a lot of dental trauma. So this is a tool you can help your patients when they're having, like when they're going through a lot of anxiety, a lot of panic and can help calm them down as well. So yeah, this is something I just wanted beautiful. to share. <laughs> so beautiful. Yeah. I really appreciate that. And that just, I mean, how long did that take? Like we all have time for this. It's just about, to your point, just consciously being aware that this is like normal hygiene, normal practice. You brush your teeth, you floss your teeth, you do some breaths so that you can keep the the rest of your your physiology and your 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 body tension. They say a soft body leads to a peaceful mind mm -hmm. and a hard body needing tension, not necessarily like not your physique, but the tension within your physique, you know, impacts your mind and vice versa. So I uh, love that. Love that and appreciate you adding that in. I mean, it is one of the most power simple but really effective tools. And um, yeah, and then the second piece is the body. And so I wanted to share um, also a very simple tool. Um, let's just dive in together so you can experience it for yourself. So this is called a body scan. And so just, you know, finding a comfortable seat or standing and just maybe like wiggling your body side to side, just rolling the shoulders. <sighs> and, and it helps to even close your eyes. Like when you close your eyes, you actually um, tune out the external world. So it's easier to drop into your body. I mean, obviously when you're doing dentistry, you can't do that. But um, just for now, just so you can really feel it fully and start to wiggle your toes. So you can, you know, this other tool I'll teach you where your attention goes, that's where the energy flows. So this mindfulness, bringing your awareness, your attention to your toes, see if you can wiggle your toes. And now without moving your toes, see if you can just soften the muscles of your toes. Feeling the connection, your, your, the soles of your feet are making with the floor. And now scanning up your body, Notice your hips. Notice if you're clenching your, your muscles in your legs to see if you can soften the muscles of your legs. Moving up your torso, dropping the shoulders down away from the ears, relaxing your shoulders. And now moving your attention to your face. Swallow, separate your teeth, take the tongue to the roof of the mouth to relax your jaw. Maybe it even helps to wiggle your jaw side to side. And soften your cheekbones, temples. Forehead. Just feeling the creases of your forehead soften, relax your eyelids, your eyebrows, ears, feeling your whole face relaxed, feeling all five fingers relax. The top of the hand, the sole of the hand, your wrists, feeling both hands, both arms relaxed, feeling both legs relaxed. Just noticing your whole body soften. Mm. Yeah, so this is the body scan and you could just see how powerful that is. Like how many of us have, you know, patients that have TMJ issues that have, you know, jaw strain and even we probably may have it as well. And so this is something you can also harness when you're in the chair because a lot of times when we're in these 
contorted positions and like bringing awareness to your body, finding, you know, an ergonomic position, but also not only an ergonomic position, but can we, where can we relax when we're working on patients? Like, can we relax our shoulders? You know, do we have to lift our arms like this, you know, like, you know, just drop your elbows to your rib cage, hug it in. We want to work like this. Yeah. We want our shoulders down away from your ears and sitting up nice and tall, but we want our facial muscles relaxed. Like we don't need to be clenching our jaw. We don't need to be scrunching our face, you know, like these are just body awareness that we can start to cultivate so that by the end of the day, you will feel like you have more energy because it's tension that that takes away our energy, that leaks our energy is tension. And so being mindful of what's happening in our bodies is, is so powerful. And, you know, um, I also t- uh, share yoga. And so, I mean, yoga is another tool that we can drop into our bodies. And um, I was actually today uh, recorded a a quick 20 minute or it was 15 to 20 minute practice of, of different um, practices that we can create more mobility in our spine, more lubrication in our joints and be able to release tension from our bodies. Because obviously when we're hyper-focused in these position, contorted positions for most of our career, it has a huge toll. And that's why, you know, musculoskeletal disorder is one of the um, most common reasons why dentists are retiring early. So, um, and most dentists, like, you know, I've, I've, I've done the, I've looked into the data. There was the American Dental Association's wellness survey they took. It was like, um, they sent uh, at, um, a survey to like 20,000 dentists and the most common um, was like aches and pains. Like in in the in every year, dentists are feeling aches and pains in their body. Like eighty um, percent of dentists reported that they were feeling that, um, especially in the shoulders, in the neck, in the back, in our wrists. And so, even like looking back, I think one of the reasons why I was getting these um, numbness in my fingers and the muscle weakness was because I was like death gripping my instrument, <laughs> you know, you remember like when you're first starting out in dentistry, like how do you hold this thing? And it's like awkward. And I was like overcompensating, overstraining my muscles. And that was, you know, and this is sometimes that can happen. Like we're like, you know, when we're working on a patient, we're like tensing like our hips, tensing our, our, our arms. And so we, we, we don't have to do that, but it's, it's just as simple as bringing that awareness and practice. Man, I'm still buzzing from the body scan. I mean, it just like it took me, it took me there. It, it's amazing how you can realize how tense you are when you take a moment to actually consciously, as you're saying, mindfully recognize it. And then once you're in that position of relaxation, like I, I wasn't sure I was going to be able to open my eyes again. I was like, I could hear you talking, but I'm just thinking to myself, oh my gosh, she just like, she just put me at such ease with your, with your voice and, and the way that you took me through that scan. And of course I've been, I've been fortunate enough to have been through many body scans with you in different modalities. Uh, but I love that Diana. And, and I think you can do that quickly if you needed to, and you can do it prolonged for as long as you'd like. But you know, let's utilize our breath. Let's, let's relax our body consciously. And I think even the breathing, when you release like that, it reminds you how tense you are when you feel that relaxation, which of course, that's our normal state. It's the, it's the, it's the dis-ease is the being so tense. And, um, I agree. You know, the first time you ever grab a dental handpiece and you cut with it, you realize 
it doesn't take a whole lot to go way, way off of where you intended to be. You do tend to grip it very tight at first. So I'm sure many of the dental students that are listening would, would be able to relate to that. And during a very stressful day or procedure or a patient that's very, you know, anxious, the energy in the room might force you to tense up more than you normally would, which of course we know even from like a golf reference or any sport where there's emotion involved, that tension is not good for performance. So these types of exercises you're promoting and, and guiding us through, to me, are like the best possible medicine we could get. Mm, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And then there's one tool, um, you know, just really quick too, is so it incorporates this body scan in the tool. And I mean, this is like near and dear to my heart that I really wanted to share as well is this practice called Yoga Nidra which is when you hear the word yoga, we're not, you know, it doesn't involve doing like complicated moves or anything. It's literally the best move ever, which is Shavasana, like lying down on your back, resting position. And um, so you, it's a guided meditation. And what I love is it's perfect for if you've never meditated in your life, you, you know, and you've maybe dabbled into meditation and you're like, oh, this is so hard, which like seated meditation, which I'll go over the difference between yoga nidra and a seated meditation. But when you're sitting in a, in a, in a seated meditation, if you guys have ever dabbled into it before, a lot of people think oh, like, why am I not feeling peace already? Like, I'm just bad at this. This is not for me. Right. And so, but that's when you're, when you're doing a focused sitting meditation, it is literally continuously being, trying to focus on your breath and coming back to your breath whenever you're going on a thought train. So whenever you're going on, you noticing your mind drifting to various types of thoughts, like, oh, I should be more productive. I should be doing this. And you can hear the voice being like, you know, well, what am I doing? Like, why am I, you know, sitting here? It's such a waste of time. Like all this, this internal voice. And then you're like, okay, I'm in a thought tangent. I'm going to come back to my breath. And then I'm in another thought tangent and I'm going to come back to my breath. So this is seated meditation, which can feel uncomfortable in the beginning, but it requires a decent amount of focus. Like you need to keep focusing back on your breath, back on your breath. And, you know, five minutes of this can feel like an eternity, but it's a good place to start. It's a great practice to be able to see the thoughts that are coming up because you're going to have thoughts and identify the inner critic thought. So that's a great practice for that. But with yoga nidra, which I love, is you don't have to bring this um, intense focus um, in this guided meditation. Actually, in yoga nidra, you're, you can just like, there's, it's, you don't have to hyper-focus and you just listen to the guidance. You lie down, you get cozy, you know, maybe putting an eye mask over yourself or a blanket, you pop in some headphones, you listen to the guidance. And sometimes you might fall asleep from this guided meditation and you're still receiving the benefits. You're still doing yoga nidra right. So I love it. It's, there's really no wrong way to experience this meditation. If you drift off, if you hear the guidance of the voice drift in and out, it's all good. Like it's all, you're, you're still receiving the benefits. And so within this, this yoga nidra meditation, there is a body scan in there. There is breathing, um, simple breathing techniques embedded into the guidance. Um, but you don't have to pay attention too much and it'll take your body into the state right before you fall asleep. So, you know, when you're in that light stage of sleep, right before the light stage of sleep, that's a, that's a, your body is like so relaxed at that point. You're like, you're, you're, they've done scientific studies where they did MRI um, imaging on, you know, your, your brain waves in yoga nidra meditation, and you can access delta theta brain waves, which is the exact same um, slow brain waves that you access in deep sleep. So that's why after um, experiencing even 20 minutes of a yoga nidra meditation, even 10 minutes of a yoga nidra meditation, and Brett has described it really well. He's like, 
it feels like, you know, last time, I think one of the yoga nidras I sent you, you're like, it feels like I plugged my body into a power socket and just charged it up like Tesla style, you know, like so quick, so efficient. <laughs> Like, no, I, I, I mean, just if I can just quickly, before you go forward, just to give a sense of how powerful this is, you know, we all have struggles with sleep at times, especially when we're stressed out. And Diana knows this. she's, you know, gifted me a number of different yoga nidra meditations she's done. And we'll definitely provide at least one in the show link in the show notes as well for you guys to participate in. But, you know, there have been times I've had a sleepless night and have to wake up and go do a whole day of dentistry. And I'll do a yoga nidra in the morning. And it is absolutely amazing that you feel like you took a deep nap for a few hours. Like it literally gives you something that mimics what sleep gives you, even when sleep isn't easy to come by. And I've had so many experiences like this. Like one time I was in Fiji, I told Diana this, I, my clock got so out of rack and we were in the middle of the jungle and there's all these sounds and noises and I couldn't sleep. I literally went day after day on this beautiful vacation suffering because I couldn't sleep. And then finally, I was like, remembered that I had in my phone one of Diana's Nidra uh, meditations and I did it and, and I fell asleep. And it was just so, I just want to say as a huge, and Diana knows this because, you know, for the entire time that I've known her, that's when Yoga Nidra came into my life. This is such a powerful medicine. So anyway, sorry to interrupt, but I just wanted everyone to know that this is like, this is what I know, Diane. That's why I call her the sleep whisperer, because this and, and her voice, as you've already seen, if you've taken a moment to like let her voice sink in into the breathing that we did and the body scan, her voice has a certain beautiful nature to it that is just so perfect for calming you and letting this this theta delta wave sort of take over which is you know so restful oh thank you brett oh i'm so glad that the yoga nidra helped you yeah when you're on vacation you know when you're in that new environment when you're traveling like also also this is you know been such a powerful tool in motherhood because if anyone here is a, a new mother or like a mother um and you know, you, your baby is, you're breastfeeding and you're waking up every like two hours, three hours to feed through the night for a whole year. Like I, you know, with Noah, um, I was, I, he got up every one to two hours. And so I'm just so thankful for yoga nidra because if you are struggling, not only to fall asleep, yoga nidra will definitely help you fall asleep. Like Brett said, but also if you didn't have a good night's sleep and you feel awful in the morning, instead of going for that coffee, which is a short lived energy, um, take a yoga to your nap, like set an alarm. So you don't fall back asleep and sleep through the day, but set an alarm 20 minutes and that will recharge you. That's literally given me fuel to get through motherhoods. I like, I wouldn't even know what I would do without yoga nidra a year of disrupted sleep and, and, you know, taking naps throughout the day. Like if after dentistry, if you're feeling that exhaustion, so when we're burning out, it feels like chronic fatigue and yoga nidra is the perfect medicine for, for getting you out of burnout. Because when you're starting to feel dissociated, when you're starting to feel like you want to quit dentistry. You want to take a break from dentistry. You're starting to become cynical, feeling cynical towards that's like, those are signs of burnout and you're really feeling judgmental of your work. So those are like the three signs of burnout, chronic fatigue, dissociation, and cynicism towards your work. And, and so yoga nidra, like will help with that fatigue. It'll re-energize you and just restore and we're in that like deep rest that's where cellular healing takes place that's where hormonal your hormones are balancing your cortisol levels are dropping you're getting more melatonin which means you'll get even more restful sleep the more you do it so yeah so yeah just you know, great tool i wanted to share with everyone absolutely yeah and i'm so grateful for that i mean 
And I, you know, like I said, we'll link that up. And I'm, I'm also envisioning maybe down the road another episode where we just do a yoga nidra. That could be amazing to have like on record that is easily accessible. Um, so I'm so grateful for your expertise on this area. Um, real quickly before, because I don't want to take too much of your time, Diana, but I know you would also mention like, you know, uh, touch, smell, mm -hmm. taste. Can you touch on that? And then we'll start to close out the session. Yeah. So one of the last tools is dropping into our senses. And when we're connected to our five senses, so this can be um, like when we're eating a meal, like something that you're already doing all the time. And so it doesn't, it's not, you're not adding more to your plate. You're just bringing more of your awareness of your consciousness, of your focus, your attention to either your breath, your body, or your five senses. And so if you're eating food, like take the, you know, the first at, to start off, just the first five bites. First, appreciate your food, look at it, like, you know, admire the colors, the texture. And then when you're taking that first bite, like really um, going into how it's tasting, the aromas, the flavors, um, then feel the food. Like, what is the texture of the food? It kind of comes through the taste, right? They're, yeah. con they're connected. But, totally. but even first, I I'll do that. I'll just, you know, I, I love what you're saying. Like, it, you know, my wife always knows when I'm mindfully eating, we call it, you know, because she'll see me pause and then I'll sort of take it in. And then you take that first bite and it's like just allowing the experience to your point, just to be more conscious and aware and therefore your tension diverts away from all these thoughts mm -hmm. and you're embodied here. And that's, mm -hmm. that's mindfulness. That's it. And it's like, you're savoring the food. You're slowing down the eating process. Like how many of us get stuck in our heads and we're eating way too quickly. We didn't even get a chance to like experience the flavors. And by then our food is all gone. And we're like, okay, we weren't even present, for, you know, for that experience. And so it's like, our food will start literally tasting better when we're, when we're practicing mindfulness. And, and it could be like first thing in the morning, if you're, you know, if you're, if your natural um, rhythm is to make a coffee or whatever warm drink you make for yourself in the morning, like make it a mindful experience, like smell the coffee, you know, like that first, those first sips, like really savor the taste and even the process of making your coffee can be a mindful experience. Um, and, and then the other piece is like when you're going for a walk in nature, I mean, nature is already a de-stressor itself. Like just getting out in nature, already, you already feel better. But if you bring mindfulness into that walking experience, so, you know, connecting your feet to the earth, like really feeling each step and listening to the birds or the ocean waves or the sounds of nature, like appreciating the beauty of nature all around you, smelling, taking deep breaths, like smelling the, the, the essential oils from the trees and the scents that are like, like feeding into your body. Like it, you know, and then we feel more alive. Like when we're dropped into the senses, we feel like just are fully alive and, 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 and just more fulfilled, like more joyful. We have more energy. Just that simple tool is, yeah, it's profound. And even just like when you're connecting to another person, active listening is actually mindfulness. Like this term active listening, <laughs> you know, but it's actually bringing mindfulness to a, con a connection with another human. So it's also dropping into the senses of listening. So when you're connecting with someone, this is another tool to engage your senses is like even the first five minutes of a conversation, try to take in what the other person's saying without trying to figure out a response. So you're fully absorbing the information with your listening sense and feeling into like understanding what the person is saying. And if, you know, this, this empathy, so putting yourself into the other person's shoes, feeling what they're feeling, really trying to listen for understanding 
And and if you don't understand something, ask a question, bring curiosity towards it and non-judgment. So non-judgment towards another person. This is mindfulness using our sense of hearing. And this will also improve your relationship. So that's why, you know, clients that when I share these practices with them, they're like, wow, my relationship's improving. I feel more alive. I feel more fulfilled. I have more energy. I mean, I've broken it down. So this is how it all works. Like it's, it's so, you know, there, it doesn't have to add more to your life and it can be embedded and integrated into all the things that you're already doing. Absolutely. I think that's why I've, I've really experienced, and I've shared this with you, so much joy doing the podcasting mm-hmm. because it's, it's this uninterrupted, dedicated time to listen and to mm-hmm. experience someone else's you know, words and, and energy, and then ultimately to have this bonded experience of having created you know, this, this content of information that's purely from the heart. Anyone that's listening to this can tell Diana just has the purest, most beautiful heart. She's such a giver and, and everything that she's talking about, she practices much like me. It's like, it's all like, I love how you said earlier. It's like, when you start to feel benefits of something, you innately want to share them so that other people can feel the benefits. And so I'm so grateful for this. And I think also everything you're talking about with the senses and the breathing, we're already doing it. But when you start to appreciate it through the mindfulness, it also feeds into the gratitude. Mm Because now all of a sudden you're like, wow, I'm so grateful that I can taste, right? Because you're like taking a minute to realize how special that is. Like this morning when I took the breath and I realized without this breath, I cannot be sustained in life. And then I appreciated and felt grateful to be able to breathe one and to have the air around me to breathe. So, so much beauty, so much wisdom, so practical. Um, I know you're going to be giving a presentation uh, very soon, uh, right after this airs. And I know that uh, the audience will great, great, gain great benefit from your presence and information. And we're going to link your, your show notes up with, you know, the, the yoga Nidra, but Diana, I have one more question for you, but before that, you know, what I'm trying to do with On the Cusp is create a community and create a community where everyone that is, you know, so gracious to be on the podcast and share that they can become part of a circle, a network of mentors, of guides, of support for our listeners. So if a listener wanted to reach out to you or find you, what's the best way for us to find you? And I know you mentioned your coaching. So can you talk maybe just a little bit about what offerings you have available currently? Mm-hmm. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. And, and thank you, Brett, for having me on this podcast and like such a beautiful, um, I love, you know, all the, all the diversity of conversations that you're bringing in and you're, and you're, and you're sharing um, to this community. And um, yeah, if people want to connect with me, you can go to my website, rest to thrive.com. Um, Brett will probably put that in the link. You can also find me on social media on Instagram, rest to thrive. Um, and yeah, like if you wanted to work with me one-on-one, I do offer one-on-one coaching, mentorship, consulting, whether it's for you personally or for your dental practice or corporation. I work with not only, you know, dentists and healthcare professionals, but also um, various corporations where there is a lot of stress when there is, you know, um, you're wearing multiple hats, you're juggling a lot. And so, um, and also sleep coaching. So if you're struggling with sleep and not only just sleep, just rest alone. So mindfulness, sleep, rest, they're all interconnected along with nervous system regulation. They, they, they all relate to each other. So I, I bring like a very holistic, um, uh, connection to all of this where, you know, even though I bridge, let's say you're struggling with sleep, like cognitive behavioral therapy, which is a very scientific methodology to help you fall asleep and stay asleep. But I also merge it with tools like yoga nidra, like mindfulness practices to be able to regulate your nervous system, to be able to get your, um, out of your thoughts into like this restlessness that might be happening into your body so that you can live from a more embodied experience of life so that you're dropped in more to the present moment, more into your senses and be able to giving you the tools so that you can relax 
yourself and so you won't need me anymore. <laughs> that's the that's the hope. It's like, you know, that's what I want to bring to my clients that they can empower themselves so that I share these tools so that they can get receive um, these tools, integrate them so that it becomes a part of who they are and a part of their life so that they can relax themselves and eventually not need me. <laughs> Beautiful. Beautiful. So Diana, uh, one last question. Uh, it's a question I like to ask my guests. You know, you envision there's an 18 year old in front of you, whatever that looks like, you know, um, but this 18 year old, you can, you can appreciate having been there. You know, they've got this sort of fire in their belly. They want to live a great life. They want to find their full potential. They just don't know how to get started. What's one piece of tangible advice you would offer an 18-year-old that's like one thing that they could enact right now that would help them move toward what is going to be their, the, the, the best version of their life? Mm. Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> I love that question. Oh, there's so many things, but I think like, you know, if I were to talk to my 18 year old self or, or even Noah when he's 18, like, I think just to, like, don't be so hard on yourself, you know, that inner, inner monster, that voice of perfectionism, of having an expectation um, and always being feeling like we're never good enough. We're never meeting our expectation. Just like oh, not being so hard on yourself, just showing yourself more love, taking more time to, for your own well-being, for your own wellness. And yeah, just giving yourself more hugs. Like literally. That's so beautiful. I love that. I love that. Such no, great just, advice. Yeah, don't be so hard on yourself. Like progress over yep. perfection, you know? Love that. And that we're love human. That. Like we're on this journey of learning and of growing. And we can apply that into dentistry as well. So, and the shame. Like, you know, one of the things that um, a lot of what dentists they meet, they say, like, I'm so burned out, but don't tell anyone. Like I'm going through this thing, but don't tell anyone, you know, there's so much hiding and shame around it, which is why I bring up a lot of these, like maybe a little uncomfortable conversations of like, you know, having someone complain or these things that we may be going through. I just want to speak it out because you're not alone. And yeah. And it's like, we all go through these things. And so can we just bring forgiveness and self-compassion? And it's probably not as bad as you think. Cause we're all doing our best. We're, you know, we, I don't think anyone really has any malicious intention and we're all trying our best and, and doing the best that we can with the tools that we have at the time. And we're always growing and developing and becoming a better version of ourselves. You know, each day. Speak you're growing, developing. I think <laughs> I heard my nephew Noah back there letting one out. He's, he's ready for mama. Yeah. Diana, thank you so much for being on the cusp with us. The wisdom, the knowledge, mindfulness is such an important area. One that's so easy to integrate into our lives, to make our lives better, to lower our stress, and to really just improve our beingness. And so thank you for that. I wish you so much luck on your presentation. I know it's going to be great. I just know you have this incredibly special piece of real estate right in my heart. And um, I'm, I can't wait to connect with you again. And I'm certain that you'll be another, you'll be back for another episode in the future. So thank you so much for being here and sharing. And I wish you the most incredible day. Oh, thank you so much, Brett. I'm so grateful for you and this community. And I wish everyone a more mindful and restful and yeah, more present day. 